Welcome to Plant Medicine Transmissions with Javier Regueiro. In the last episode of Plant Medicine Transmissions, we started looking at the basic of healing as I understand it, mainly the importance of taking responsibility for one's own experience and the embracing of that experience, embracing, surrendering to our own experience, embracing our true feelings and emotions is probably one of the most challenging of experiences. We create defense mechanisms in order not to feel, in order not to feel what in a distant past we have deemed too painful, too overwhelming to actually embrace. This is a very human, very normal defense mechanism and uh, it has its value in the moment, but it keeps those resisted experiences, so to speak, in the back burner. And no matter what amount of denial and repression, those resisted experiences still affect the way that we perceive ourselves, others, and the world. Surrender has become a very fashionable word in uh, spiritual circles and including in plant medicine circles. And yet, the most important surrender, act of surrender, is that surrender towards ourselves instead of pursuing sometimes a little too uh, actively this process of transformation of a spiritual evolution, we would actually do better to surrender to our own selves in particular surrendering and embracing those aspects of ourselves that we have put strong judgments against and that we do our best to hide from ourselves as well as others. That process of surrendering to oneself actually entails the integration of all those layers of resistance, those layers of protection that we have put around traumatic or painful experiences, including the pain around our soul wounds. In the book, The Inner World of Trauma by Donald Kalshed, published by Routledge, uh, the author quotes paragraph by Carl Jung, written in the 50s, where Jung says that the role of the therapist is nothing but to support their clients in integrating and letting go of all of these layers of resistance, all these layers of protection that were put in place soon after a traumatic event. Letting go of these resistances, of these protections, is what will allow the patient to finally experience in fullness, therefore integrate and heal those past traumas. I can only agree with Carl Jung as myself have done the best that I could over the years to try and get rid of 
my pain. Unconsciously, I was looking for a shortcut that would allow me to continue living my life without ever having to feel my own pain. Unfortunately, those efforts proved to be fruitless. And it wasn't until I started engaging with plant medicine that through the help of plant medicine, uh, in their ability to lower my conscious resistances as well as my unconscious resistances, I was finally able to surrender to myself and to experience long held in check emotions and pains. In the last 50 years, we have seen the creation of countless therapeutic modalities that are designed to help us manage our own inner landscape. We are trying to control our own inner landscape in the same way that we're trying to control nature. Instead of listening and embracing our own inner landscape, we seem somehow to be under this illusion that our own inner landscape is manageable with rational ways. And the more we control our own inner landscape, the more of a guarantee of a happy life we have. Some of these techniques to me seem more like a self-brainwashing with affirmations, with positive thinking, and uh, I don't really see a long-term benefit for it because I'm aware that anything that is not truly integrated will stay, will linger on, and will keep affecting us no matter what we tell ourselves in our own heads. This strategizing attitude for me is always a sign of resistance, of as yet an inability to surrender and to simply embrace what is. When we are strategizing, we are really just in our minds. And in our minds, this integration, this healing does not really happen. Another way by which we avoid embracing our own experience is by rationalizing it, by giving explanations and by telling ourselves that we are okay because now we understand. Now let's take a, a practical case. Many people come to me already knowing the details of a past traumatic experience. Say, for instance, childhood abuse. And uh, from where they are now as adults, they can understand the reasons of that behavior. Say, for instance, my father was an alcoholic. He was in a lot of pain. And that level of understanding can sure help with a certain degree of compassion. However, in the case of traumatic experiences, it is not about us in the present moment. It's not who we are in the present moment that really needs healing. What happens when we resist a traumatic experience 
it's a part of us is stuck in the past. And it's that part that is still stuck in the past, stuck in that very moment of resistance that needs healing. So simply to rationalize it from an adult point of view is often not sufficient. In those cases where the person seems to be okay about it, I oftentimes encourage them to bring to the ceremony that young self that probably still holds a lot of pain, a lot of resentment, a lot of unexpressed emotions. Emotions cannot be explained away. Emotions, in order to be integrated, at least as far as I'm concerned, need to be experienced. And need to be experienced fully. That is, without those repressive and self-repressive mechanisms that have supported us in keeping those emotions in check. Now, speaking once again about childhood and family relationships, I grew up in a culture where to feel certain emotions such as anger and resentment against one's own parents is actually not good. From a very early age, I learned to repress those emotions, to hide them from myself and particularly from others. With the years, I had to realize that those repressed emotions were still there with me every day of my life. And it was a bit of a struggle to begin with. I had disconnected myself so deeply from my own emotions that to reconnect with them once again was a bit of an uphill run. Eventually, as I became more comfortable with my own emotions and particularly saw the importance of connecting with my emotions, expressing them whenever the need arose, show me that those emotions were not nearly as bad, as destructive as I had imagined. As a matter of fact, it was my own unease with these emotions, my own judgment against them, that turned them into negative emotions. From where I stand today, there is no such thing as a negative emotion. Actually, I think that the very expression negative emotion is a total misperception of what our emotional states are really about. Our emotions are simply expressions of who we are. And I believe that we are noble in the totality of who we are and not just in parts of it. The same is in regards to our physical states. We're about whenever we get sick, we start resenting ourselves, we start resenting our bodies for being sick, when the truth of the matter is that our physical ailments and diseases are just one last opportunity for our own higher self to express itself and to make us notice that something is out of order, 
that something is not aligned or in integrity. We hear those insights, those messages, well before we actually fall sick. But we don't pay attention. We don't pay attention. Oftentimes we dismiss our own emotions. We dismiss our own insights, our own inner voice. We dismiss it in, for a million different reasons. But oftentimes it is just that challenge, that challenge to be truthful to ourselves, to be in, so to speak, right relation with ourselves, to honor our own wisdom. And as we start denying and repressing our own emotions out of fear of not being accepted, out of fear of being abandoned, then we give no other option to our own selves but to start communicating with us using a stronger language, so to speak, that is by manifesting physical disease. Instead of resenting our physical bodies for not doing as they were told, for not functioning in an ideal way, we can actually be very grateful to our bodies because that is one last call from our higher self, from our souls, a call to stop and pay attention. Of course, it takes more than physical illness for us to surrender right away. Oftentimes, our first reaction is once again that one of strategizing of wanting to fix the disease as soon as possible. Physical illness brings up for most of us deep fears, the fears connected with dying, with the fear of physical pain, with the fear of not being able to take care of ourselves in this very individualistic society where we need to prove that we can take care of ourselves at all times. So many fears are reawakened that at first, at the onset of an illness, we forget all about what is this illness, that it is an opportunity for us to stop and to look inside for the deeper reasons for that illness. We are so busy trying to survive and trying to fend off our own fears that it takes a while. Oftentimes, it takes the failure of our strategies, the failure to actually heal simply on a physical level, and that brings a deeper process where we start questioning deeper roots that at first we would have rather prefer not to look at. In my own uh, personal process, I actually had to come very close to physical death, to be in a state of total physical weakness for my own resistance to feel the rage against my parents to melt down enough for me to actually access and embrace and feel that rage. Hopefully not everybody needs to brush that close to dying for their resistances to melt down. And I found particularly San Pedro uh, to be very supportive 
in allowing, allowing those repressed emotions to finally be embraced. It is important to be aware of all of these defense mechanisms to honor the fact that these defense mechanisms have supported us, have helped us stay alive, but also to realize that what was valid in the past isn't necessarily valid in the present moment. And those defense mechanisms that helped us survive have now become the biggest obstacles towards our own healing and growth. Blessings.